This is a pretty classic or standard problem relating to areas, volumes of revolution, and volumes for arbitrary cross-sectional figures. So it's good to be familiar with how to handle this because you'll see this a lot, and it's also a good, um, of good pedagogical value. So this is the kind of information that's going to be useful. And why don't we just jump in? I've got this curve. f of x is x to the 4 minus 2.3x cubed plus 4. And that's really going to drive all of our work. So I've gone ahead and put that formula in for y1 in the calculator. And we also have the, the curve, which is a horizontal line, y equals 4, to collectively bound a region r. Uh, to know precisely um, where that region ends, we have to, of course, find these intersection points. But a moment's thought makes it clear that this occurs at 0 and this occurs at 2.3. If that isn't clear, you can always graph the two values and find the intersection points. But here we can actually handle that in our head. And so now we're going to rotate this region R about the line Y equals negative 2. Now I'm not a very good artist on the fly, and so I tried to sketch out what this volume of revolution is going to look like uh, ahead of time. Something like this. We're, we're rotating about Y equals negative 2. We're rotating this region R and so we get a figure that on the exterior, it's just a solid cylinder. But the interior is carved out according to the lower curve that defines the region. That means we're going to be using the disk method with the washer or carve out piece in addition. And so let's go ahead and write this out. Got A. We're going to say that volume is going to be an integral of pi something squared dx from 0 to 2.3 minus another integral, pi, 0 to 2.3, something squared dx. Now let's talk a little bit about how I knew the dx and the limits of integration. First of all, the axis of revolution, or rotation, is y equals negative 2. And so because we're using the disk method, those disks have to be oriented perpendicular to that axis. That means that the thicknesses, the infinitesimal thicknesses of the disks will be dx. So that's why we know ultimately that this is an integral with respect to dx. Knowing that, we now know that our limits of integration have to be 0 to 2.3. And the pi r squared is simply the standard formulation. That's the area of each successive infinitesimal disk. So what goes here is what we call r outer, the outer radius that defines this. And r outer is very simple. r outer. That's just going to be 4 minus negative 2. It's 6. And it stays constant over the entire interval. That reflects the fact that it's simply a solid cylinder. The inner radius, our inner, and I'm going to draw it, hmm, where's a good place? It's like this, our inner. Okay. That goes from the curve down to the axis of rotation or revolution. 
Well, what's that? That distance is going to be f of x minus negative 2. Now, of course, minus negative 2 is plus 2, but I emphasize writing it that way because you can say, look, it's this curve, f of x, minus the other curve, which in this case is the horizontal line, y equals negative 2. So that's the calculation we have to do. We simply have to uh, cue that up on the calculator. So let's go take a look at that. As I said, I've got um, f of x already plugged in. And so we have two integrals to do. Uh, uh, we're going to use f in i and t. And I like getting it out of the catalog. You're welcome to use the shortcut for finding it as well. Uh, either works just fine. Okay, we're going 0 up to 2.3. And our first function is just 6, the quantity squared. Again, I know that's 36, but I just want to emphasize the form of the integral. And then we're going to subtract off from that another integral. Uh, go back. Now just a word about this. It is very common in textbooks that the so-called washer method presents the r outer squared minus the r inner squared in a single integral, and that's just fine. The reason that I emphasize two separate integrals is I think it helps students avoid the mistake that's classic of putting the squared outside the difference of the two r's with um, parentheses around the difference of the two r's. I just want them to feel that it's two separate integrals, an outer solid, and then a carved out inner piece that has to be subtracted. So what do we want here? We want f of x. minus negative 2. As I said, I could put just plus 2, but I'm trying to emphasize the form that these calculations take. And so that's dx. Now, we get a calculation, but notice that we have yet to multiply by the pi. I was saving that to the end. We're going to multiply both of these terms by pi. And so our final answer, 98 98.8678. And I'm just saying that we evaluated this numerically because I'm OCD and insist on uh, spelling out everything. Okay, that is part A. Now, part B, again, something that I've had to do a little pre-drawing work on. Part B asks us to find a cross-sectional area style volume. So I've tried to pre-draw that. And what we're making are isosceles triangles. This isn't a perfect uh, rendering, but here's the region. What do we know about orientation? What we know is that each cross-section is perpendicular to the x-axis. That's what tells us that this goes up and down. It's what tells us that our widths our infinitesimal widths are going to be dx's as opposed to, for example, dy's, and that we're building these isosceles triangles. Now, how do I know that it's one of the two equal sides of the isosceles right triangles? It's because they tell us that um, one of the legs is in R. 
they would have had to put the hypotenuse in R for it to have the alternative orientation. So uh, this is part B. I guess I should write that. And we're finding a volume of cross-sectional areas. So we need to start in a stop point. The orientation, as I've said, is already dx. And so we're going to write that the volume equals an integral from 0 to 2.3 of the cross-sectional area as a function of x uh, dx. Now we have to continue. What is that cross-sectional area? Well, um, we're talking about a triangle. We want one half a base times a height. One half. Now, what is the base? The base is the distance between the top curve that defines the region and the bottom curve. So that's going to be a 4 minus f of x. What is the height? Ordinarily, we'd write the height as a separate expression here, but the height, because it's an isosceles triangle, is exactly the same as the base. So we're just squaring. And that's all we have. So we'll evaluate that numerically. Uh, v is, what is it approximately equal to? Uh, let's go back to the calculator and do this calculation. So what are we going to do? We've got, we need FNINT. going from 0 to 2.3. Our function is a quantity that's going to be squared. Now, since it's going to be squared, whether we do it as um, 4 minus f of x or f of x minus 4 doesn't really matter, but just to stay consistent, I'm going to write it as 4 minus, we'll put in y1, Four minus f of x, that quantity is squared. And then we just define the limit of integration, or rather the um, integration, uh, the, the differential, what we're integrating with respect to is dx. Now, I still need to divide by 2, but we're going to do that after the calculation. We got that, and so we divide by 2. And we have 3.5737. And again, being obsessive compulsive, I'll say evaluating numerically. OK, I think we're on to part C. And this one is kind of fun. We don't have to use the calculator at all. We just imagine that there is some vertical line, x equals k, that divides this region in half. I'm not going to redraw this. I'm just going to work right on top of the original drawing. Let's say it's right, I don't know, right about there. I'm going to call that k. Now, we have to write an equation involving integrals that if we were to solve the equation, it would give us uh, the value of k. Well, there are a couple of ways we can do this. I'm only going to show you one. And that is, we could just write that the integral from here to here has to be uh, the same total area as the integral from here to here. So we will write the integral from 0 out to k of area between curves. I know this curve is always greater 
than the lower curve. So I'm going to dispense with the absolute value and just write 4 minus f of x. That curve has to equal the integral from k to 2.3, again, of that same uh, area between curves formulation, 4 minus f of x. That should be sufficient. Now, one other way you could do this, if you wanted a little more specificity, is you could say that this integral from 0 to k equals half of the total integral from 0 to 2.3. The advantage of that is that you can evaluate the integral from 0 to 2.3 numerically, and so you come down to a single integral expression, 0 to k, this integrand equals that numerical value. Uh, that might be a little more informative, but hey, the problem says you can in, uh, an equation involving integral expressions, meaning plural, so I think we're going to leave it as is and call it a day. Hope that helps.